Hello guys! In today's video, I will show you what techniques you can use in mid-journey to create great images that you can use in your workflow. Also, thank you ASUS and Intel for sponsoring this video. This time I tested the mid-journey version 5.2 and, like it or not, I need to say that the progress is impressive. I used the same prompts as in my first video to generate the images in the new version. Here is the comparison. The results are more detailed. They now actually started to look more like a render, still more like a painting, but way better than previously. Also, the outcome is sharper, and the colors and contrast, all of this works nicely. It's way closer to the matte painting style. The cool option to use is the describe. It works similarly to the imagine, but here, instead of writing a prompt, we have to drag and drop the image. I use the image from our 3ds Max Advanced Exterior Train. This option will result in four different descriptions of the chosen image, so potential prompts. I generated images based on all the prompts. Here is how it looks. The results are very different, however, I really like them. It's a great source of inspiration. I could use this water style in my image. It looks very natural. Or here is the way how the shrubs with flowers and stones work. Actually, this result is pretty similar in terms of composition and surroundings. It's much warmer, but I love this mode. So welcoming and cozy. These results are not similar to mine, but again, I love the atmosphere on these images. Unfortunately, at this moment, we still have to work, as AI won't do everything for us. And for that, we need to have a powerful machine. The good news is that now we have a very compact solution. Instead of large PC with screens, keyboard and all the cables, we can have just a laptop, which gives us the possibility to work from every place in the world. And I found one just perfect for me, Asus ProArt StudioBook 16 OLED. Two most important parameters for 3D artists, CPU and GPU. The laptop has an Intel Core i9 13980HX processor and RTX 4070 laptop GPU which gives extraordinary performance. Working is so fast and smooth. Talking about the GPU, I need to mention the MUX switch that is a part of this laptop. With this microchip, when your battery life is running low, your machine will automatically adjust to save power. But when you're in a tight spot where speed is everything, you can enable a discrete GPU mode in Armory Crate to get the best performance possible. The laptop by default has 32 GB of RAM, but thanks to its upgradeability, I used the option to max it out to 64 GB, which is hard to find on the market, but it's a minimum for my type of work. I have two 3ds Max files open, and I am already over 32 GB. But luckily, ASUS supported my needs to have a smooth workflow. Check out the link in the description to check out details on this laptop and Intel processor. We can use the blend command to combine images into one. It works similarly to imaging command, just the interface is optimized. We have to upload the images, hit enter, and wait for the results. It works with up to five images, so there is a number limitation here. Also, you cannot type anything. If you want to combine more images or add some text, alternatively, you can use the imaging tool. If you want to generate based on an image and it's not here, we have to upload it first. As you've done with preparation, we can type slash imagine and drag and drop choose an image to the prompt. Remember to have the space between the links. We can additionally add some more details in the prompt. Let's say I want to include a girl next to the river and emphasize the cozy atmosphere. We can make it as specific as we want. We can add the ratio and so on. This method can be great if you want to quickly test some of your ideas for a future project. You choose images that are in line with the concept, similar architecture, landscape, lighting or mood you have in mind add some extra guidelines, and here you go. It actually gets more or less the idea I had in my head. Of course, it's not super realistic, it looks more like matte painting, but still for exploring ideas is more than enough. The thing is that most of the time we don't need to have an exact building or landscape to test ideas. It will take much more time to experiment with various lighting scenarios and moods in 3D. Now, we can shorten this process and use a little help as from mid-journey. Then go straight to 3D software and create the proper image there. There are some extra options in mid-journey version 5 as zoom out. We can zoom out two times, one and a half times by default, or set custom zoom. It basically extends our generated image by the value we will choose, so we can see more of the surroundings. Custom zoom can be the value between 1 and 2. Again, this may be great for testing ideas. Make square automatically changes the ratio of the image to 1 to 1. 
Now let me present to you the way I found the very successful when creating the prompts. I use our 8-step system for describing the ideas I have in my head. If you want to learn more about the method, watch my video where I explain all the steps. Link in the corner. To make the results more specific, I added some subcategories to a couple of steps, so we have the formula prepared. Now it's time for our move. I show you some examples I've got. Let's see if everything meets our requirements. Checked. 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 You can see that the results are quite precise. I really like the mood in these images. Here, for example, I got these four images. They are quite similar, but I like this one the most, so I scale it up. And finally, I use the new option I've told you about, zoom out, to get more of the room included in the image. As you can see, we can test various ideas this way. Let me know in the comments if you get nice results using this formula as a prompt. Also, you know that I like optimizing my workflow. This is why this laptop is a perfect match for me. First of all, the ASUS style. It can be used in various creative apps. For example, it can change the brush size in Photoshop or we can use it in 3ds Max for moving the time slider. You can customize it however you want. Secondly, the ProArt Creator Hub. We can not only customize the ASUS dial and the keyboard, but also easily adjust settings, monitor performance, and create task groups to launch apps together. On top of this, the screen is also very impressive. It is an ASUS Lumina OLED 16-inch 3.2K 120Hz OLED display. With a 180-degree hinge, it gives the possibility to work in every condition and every position. Plus, I love the haptic touchpad with stylus support, which I can use in my post-production work. No need for an additional tablet is needed. I told you, it's a very compact solution. By the way, if you like to keep things clean, you will love the new Asus Antimicrobial Guard that inhibits the growth of bacteria by over 99% over a 24-hour period. It's especially important when you work from public places like cafes or airports. Okay. Now, even though the results are very promising, there is also the other side of the coin, and it applies not only to mid-journey, but to AI tools in general. There are still unsolved issues like copyrights. First of all, the program uses the images of other creators to generate graphics. And the result can be often very similar, especially when we ask the bot to create an image or architecture in someone's style. Another thing is a lack of precision. Even though we can get very nice, promising results, it works only when we have some general ideas. If you would like to create something really specific, this is not where mid-journey is, at least right now. The issue is that it's hard to explain the idea you have in your head in words, as everyone will visualize it in different ways. Similarly, for Photoshop Beta, you can add various things, but if you would like to have something really specific in your image, that will be more than a challenge. And on top of this, sometimes it's just easier to do things manually than try and continuously regenerate the results. So don't be fixed to one solution, as sometimes it just doesn't work. So let me tell you why, in my opinion, the AI won't replace artists. If you want a fun answer, I saw somewhere on the internet a great conclusion that AI will won't take your job because the clients will need to know what they want first. But being more serious, it probably won't be AI who will take your job, but the other people who will know how to use it. Because human creativity will be still needed. AI is just a tool, at least for now, and someone is needed to use it. Even if you use the generated images, the premium services and professional skills still will be needed. So you may wonder, what to do in this case? The truth is that no one knows the future. But in this fast-paced world we live in, it's all about being one step ahead of the game. And guess what? Technology is the key to achieving that. If you want to learn all about creating visualizations, check out our updated visualization trade. Also, if you are looking for a perfect machine for 3D work, check out the link in the description to check out details on this laptop. Bye-bye!